Hello friends, Techman Pat here. I have spent the last six months researching home batteries and will be making more videos around the topic. But for today, let me share with you what you need to know about the upcoming home battery rebate from the government. First things first, the new federal battery rebate only applies if you already have solar panels on your home. The Albanese government's Cheaper Home Batteries program is a 10-year, $2.3 billion initiative to cut battery costs by about 30%. It offers roughly a $370 per kilowatt discount on eligible battery systems. In practice, that means up to 50 kilowatt system qualifies or about 18,500 off a 50 kilowatt battery. Now, I took some averages for the following calculations and I also based them on the use in Western Australia, but so they will vary based on your own circumstances. Homeowners with existing solar can save roughly $1,100 per year on bills by adding a battery and up to $2,300 per year if installing a new solar plus battery in the same time. Now, the rebate is not means tested, it is delivered through the small scale renewable energy scheme, uh, the same framework that subsidized solar panels. So don't expect sudden price rises, aside from long waiting periods. It's heavily scrutinized. From a timing perspective, the scheme officially starts July 1st, 2025, the next financial year, but it is effectively backdated to about April 6th, 2025. Batteries can even be purchased and installed before July 1st, as long as they are not commissioned, which means not switched on until the new financial year. Now, this is a sort of pre-booking approach, which means early adopters who install in mid-2025 can still qualify by delaying the final commissioning. Now, let's talk eligibility and conditions of the federal rebate. Now, to get the federal rebate, you must have a rooftop solar system already or be installing solar and the battery together. The rebate effectively only applies to homes going solar plus battery since it's delivered via the solar STC framework. You can install a larger battery, but only the first 50 kilowatt hours earns the subsidy. And the batteries and inverters must be on the Clean Energy Council's approved list and installation must be done by a CEC accredited installer. This ensures safety standards are met. And all eligible batteries must be virtual power plant VPP capable, meaning they can connect to a grid orchestration system. However, joining a VPP is not mandatory to claim the rebate. In fact, New South Wales schemes, for example, offer extra incentives if you do join a VPP. Now, one of the most common questions is whether you can stack the state battery rebate with the new federal battery scheme. I checked directly with my installer and the answer is yes, they can be combined. So if you're one of the lucky West Australians who qualify for the $5,000 rebate, you could end up with a seriously discounted battery. That said, stacking isn't always straightforward across all states. So always double check what's allowed in your state or better yet, get you installed to confirm it before you actually commit. Lastly, the rebate is available to homeowners, small businesses and community facilities. The scheme is broad, but each address gets one rebate. There's no extra for a second battery at the same house. For example, a typical 10 kilowatt battery system might cost $12,000 installed, and so a 30% federal rebate of $3,720 would bring that down to roughly $8,000. Now then, onto the individual state and territory battery incentives. On top of the federal rebate, many states and territories offer their own programs, and eligibility and generosity varies widely. Some outright grants or discounts, others are interest-free loans. For Victoria, there is no cash rebate, but Victoria's Solar Homes program provides an interest-free loan up to 8,800 for a home battery. To qualify, you must be an owner occupied or installing a solar system of at least five kilowatts. You can apply to the Victorian Solar Panel Rebate, Battery Loan, and Hot Water Remit simultaneously. In practice, the loan simply covers parts of your battery cost repaid over four years, and this loan can stack with the federal rebate. You can use the federal 30% off and borrow the rest interest-free. In New South Wales, from the 1st of November 2024, the Peak Demand Reduction Scheme offers discounts on battery costs for homes with existing solar, and accredited installers apply the rebate directly 
to their quotes. Typical discounts are 1,600 to 2,400 off a new battery installation, which again is size dependent. In addition, New South Wales offers 250 to $400 per battery for connecting it to the government VPP. Now this VPP bonus can be claimed twice per household three years apart. Queensland's battery booster program has ended. It was capped at 2,000 rebates, three to four thousand dollars each, and closed in May 2024. There is currently no state battery rebate active, only the federal one for now. South Australia's previous home battery scheme is now closed to new applicants. In effect, South Australia has no statewide battery subsidy right now. The one exception though is the City of Adelaide Council. It offers a local scheme giving up to 50% off a home battery capped at $2,000. Now at home here, Western Australia, they've launched their residential battery scheme from the 1st of July, 2025. Synergy customers will get $500 per kilowatt rebate up to 10 kilowatts, which is a max of $5,000, while Horizon Power, which are regional customers, get $750 per kilowatt, $7,500. Now in addition, low to moderate income households can qualify for interest-free loans up to $10,000 to cover the battery cost. Costs. Rebates will apply as an upfront discount on quotes and the first 20,000 homes across WA are expected to be supported. So there are limited seats and the best part is these incentives can stack with the federal rebate since one is state funded and one is federal. Of course, qualifying batteries must be VPP ready and meet WA's technical rules. But again, joining a VP program is optional. Now, the Australian Capital Territory, ACT, there is no dedicated battery rebate. Instead, the ACT's Sustainable Housing Scheme offers a zero interest loan up to $15,000 for energy upgrades, including adding batteries or solar. And concession households can also get up to 5,000 or roughly 50% of the cost of either home energy support program, which can be combined with the ACT loans. Onto the Northern Territory, the Home and Business Battery Scheme, which started December 2024, provides a straight grant of $400 per kilowatt hour of usable battery capacity, capped at $12,000 per system. In other words, up to 30 kilowatts can be funded and batteries must be CEC approved, of course. And this grant is statewide and applies to homeowners, businesses, and community groups. It stacks with the federal rebate since one is, again, territory funded and one is federal. Unfortunately for Tasmania, no direct cash rebate exists. However, Tasmanians can use the Energy Saver Loan Scheme to get interest-free loans up to $10,000 for a range of solar or battery upgrades. It can be used alongside the federal rebate. So let's talk about the costs after these rebates. Now I've mentioned 30%, but to put the numbers, it, consider the typical battery price is around $1,000 to $1,200 per kilowatt installed. For example, Solar Quote reports that popular five kilowatt systems can run about $9,000 to $10,000 installed, and a 10 kilowatt system is around $14,000 to $15,000. This includes the uh, battery, and then potentially an inverter if you need one, and the installation. With a 30% rebate, these costs drop 30%, which can be substantial. Basically, typical 10 kilowatt installs are around 10 to 17K. So after federal incentives, they are often in the $7,000 to $11,000 range. However, here comes the messy part. I got an email today from my solar installer with their head office based in New South Wales, which read 10.4 kilowatt battery for just $4,699. For me then in WA, if by chance I end up one of the 20,000 people who gets the 5,000 state rebate, which you can stack, well, what's that, right? Is it free or does the government pay me? I also got a quote earlier this year before any incentives and they quoted 7,099 for a 10 kilowatt plus hybrid inverter on a single phase. Then I also got another quote for a 13.5 kilowatt Tesla Powerwall 3 and gateway, which totals to 15,490 and that's with no rebates. Now I've mentioned all these words, it's very messy and it's very confusing because A, installers, they're a bit tricky. They don't tell you what type of battery when they send out these mass emails. Do you get blackout protection? Is it single phase or three phase? What brand of battery, which leads into its potential lifespan and quality and performance and so on? What kind of features do they come in? Do they have an app? Do you need to be continuously connected to the internet? There's a lot there. The installers just say the kilowatt and then the price, which is, to be honest, I get it. Most people only care about that. 
So to that end, make sure to subscribe. I will do a follow-up video on what to look out for in buying a battery for your home. Not necessarily specifically which batteries to choose, but specifically what to look out for and what's the simplest thing you can get for your home at the best price. And lastly, some caveats and considerations. While the rebates are generous, there are some important fine print details to be aware of. Make sure you use an accredited installer that are selling approved products. For example, in the Northern Territory, battery must be CEC listed. In New South Wales, only installers accredited under the PDRS can give you the $1,600 to $2,500 discount. Batteries must be VPP capable, which generally means using a compatible hybrid inverter or backup system. And if your existing inverter isn't compatible, you may need to upgrade adding to the cost. One last thing, off-grid batteries or upgrades to existing system often don't qualify. For example, New South Wales explicitly says an already installed battery isn't eligible for the PDRS rebate and the federal rules are more flexible but if you already have a small battery you may only get the rebate on the added capacity. So do keep that in mind. And make sure to keep a track of all your paperwork. Some federal rebates will be claimed via the STC through the retailer and of course the installer but some might require some paperwork to be sent to receive the rebate. In short, do your research, get multiple quotes, ensure your battery system and inverter is on the approved list and book installers early if you want to. And useful approach is to confirm with your installer that they can apply both the federal rebate and any state incentives together. Just make sure you ask. If you don't ask, you might not get and then be upset later on. Well, I hope this has given you a clear picture of Australia's battery rebate landscape. Batteries are now significantly cheaper and you know, every detail matters. I have already done my quotes, I've chosen my installer, and in a future video, we will install a 20 kilowatt battery system at my home, then track its performance and payback based on these new rebates. I'll show exactly how the incentives flow through and how quickly the system actually starts saving me money. I will share one number with you though. According to my Excel spreadsheet, I will have an annual savings of $2,600. Will that come true? Will I be able to pay off this system in a couple of years? Well, subscribe and stay tuned for that deeper dive. Until then, happy battery hunting. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in another one. Bye.